I wanted this to be textual. I wanted to create a world that everyone thought, oh, I want my living in that world. Isle of Skye was one of the most beautiful places I think I've ever been to. The landscape was magical. I'm parading around the countryside of Scotland in a very tight miniskirt, doing macho, masculine, Highland game activities. <laughs> Patrick in his short kilt. I almost saw his cable. <laughs> I'm Paul Wayland, um, and I'm better looking than Patrick Dempsey, which is pretty obvious. Um, and I'm the director, so I get to tell Patrick what to do all the time. But no, but then you're revealing yourself. I'm a bit of a romantic at heart myself, so doing a romantic comedy was something that I've always kind of wanted to do. What are you doing? I'm gonna jump. No, God. There's always romance or tragedy in my films. And I thought here was a romantic comedy where we could actually put a lot of comedy into it. Oh. Oh. What you want to do is give people some laughs along the way, and I'm, we've certainly packed this one with a few laughs. Good morning, Hannah. Coffee the way you like it. Mmm, perfect timing. I just finished working on his balls. I don't think anything is as difficult as comedy. Just give it a bit of and then... Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. I've tried both, and I can tell you that the comedies are a lot tougher than the dramas to direct, because the comedies have the smallest bullseye possible. I still agree to three with a bi-monthly BJ. Oh, this is disturbing. Four, and make it weekly. Paul has a terrific sense of humor, and he has a real good manner in terms of the handling of people to coax out of them what is really comic. He really brings something unique as far as the European sort of comedy and, and vision and, and tone for the film. What is it you wear on your wedding night? Your um, trousseau. Yeah, should, so shouldn't it be yeah. perfect? The great thing about Paul's technique is sort of he just kind of gets an idea on the set and you just kind of go with it and, and, and see where it takes you. Oh! Hi. Hi, one more time. This sort of came up in the morning. He was like, you juggle, right? And I go, yes. And um, he goes, well, why don't we try it with the plates? I'm like, okay, I haven't juggled in a while. So we just sort of built the scene around that. Yeah, I think that's all right. Okay. Now. You feel like that mixes or matches? It mixes. Well, it I'm mixing. Mix. I'm matching. But it doesn't really. I don't, I don't think, think anyone's going to really question well, it. No okay. one's going to listen, really. Because what you want to do is you want to make your... <laughs> <laughs> come alive and just sing like no one. <laughs> and if you're Greek, <laughs> you want to break them. Now let's move over to the other table. The over and under was four, and we hit it. One thing. It changed the dynamic of the whole scene completely because it sort of ended after that, and juggling the place where punctuation of his first step into being the perfect man of honor. That is the goal. Also, at the end of the day, you will find connections. Oh, Patrick Dempsey and Michelle Monaghan are both, I mean, really great actors. They have bonded so well together. Their energy together is so natural. It, it really does play as a couple that have known each other for 10 years. It's cute. Ah, cute. I do not want to look cute on my wedding night. Just put this on. It's not pretentious. It's not arrogant. It comes across really genuinely. And I think that's Patrick's style to a T. And I think that's what makes Patrick so great for this role. He is an everyman. He's this happy-go-lucky guy. Where'd you get this from? Over there. Yeah, yeah right, exactly. Yeah. So pick that one up at the same time. So do both of them. He's really annoying. He's bloody handsome. He's bloody handsome. And you know, I find it very difficult. So I'm always like going up to him with my hat on. I keep my glasses on like this. I'm like looking up at him. I'm Patrick. He's got the classic looks, but he's not too prissy with it. You know, he feels like a guy. He's not picture perfect. While he's picking you up in the air... I'm being thrown. You, no, you look 
in that direction, you see what's happened, yeah? Uh, OK. I've done some terrible things to him. I've had him naked. I've had him in a mini kilt. And I've also made him wear a bridesmaid's dress. And none of these things were in the script. All right, Paul. Whatever you need, buddy. So tell me again why you agreed to be the maid of honor. <laughs> Sidney Pollack plays um, Patrick's father, Tom, um, and he brought a lot of fear to the project because basically I had to direct one of the most famous directors in the world. When I was on like my 10th take with him, he said, you know, I always use the first takes. Yeah, I've heard that since about seven. Yeah. Directors, they're all alike. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, it was good, and he's a good actor. He's a good, he's funny, he's funny. Casablanca, Bogey puts her on the plane. Pussy. Bogey's a pussy? Big pussy. If you're any kind of an actor at all, you resist what isn't the truth, pussy. I can play comedy. I know what comedy is. But I'm very uncomfortable if I'm asked to do something that doesn't feel like it has any truth in it. It's just begging for a laugh. And you have to hope that the director's not going to push you in that direction. Look at this beauty, will you? <laughs> Hello, sweetheart. <laughs> Drunk is the night I first met her. Sidney Pollack, it was a real honor to be able to play with him and, and to be in these scenes. And he's very funny and adds a lot of weight to it. My God, you are pretty. I used to be that pretty once. Every film has its own challenges. For us, the two challenges were one, Patrick Dempsey's schedule and how to make that work. And the second thing, how to give this thing scope. Um, because of the schedule, we had to find as much as we could shoot in Los Angeles to replicate New York. Go to New York for a few days, as much as we could. We managed to do four days there. <laughs> Made of honor. <laughs> That's funny stuff. Man, but you're a guy. That was the biggest challenge, trying to get LA to look a bit less sunny, um, a little bit grittier than, than you might otherwise do. And Paul was very keen that he didn't want it to look too bright. He didn't want sort of comedy lighting. He wanted it to look real and believable. So that's been our sort of key approach all the way through. And that meant that an awful lot of what we had to do with interiors. This pretty much blows your rule out of the water about no women allowed at your place, huh? Yeah, good's a rule if you don't break it every now and then. I'm very, very impressed. One of the things that I had to work hard on creating was the most wow loft of New York. <laughs> In Los Angeles, we found this one particular place, which absolutely had the greatest bones you could see. It had all the levels, and the best thing about it, it was two lofts put together. So when I looked at the place, I immediately realized that by knocking a wall, we can easily connect those two spaces. The danger in minimalist and modern design is it can end up being a bit cold. And that was something we did not want to do. And so what I did is build a lot of bookcases, an entire library, all curved, and to just make the room a bit more embracing and warm and inviting and really, truly give the space a sense of creativity and a heart. The windows were, were that lovely sort of hemispherical shape that you get in a lot of old New York lofts. So that worked rather well. And then we found one in New York that matched it perfectly. So we could do the exteriors there and the interiors there. All right, here we go. Roll down, please. Good. Good. Hollywood come into Scotland to reinvent the Highland Games. And what I try to do, it's a reenactment of the Highland Games because I wanted to give it a real flavour, and it is like, you know, before the wedding that they've decided that everyone's going to dress up in fancy dress and they're going to reenact it. Who's in charge of that? I... We're in the Isle of Skye. There's 12,000 people here at the best of times. We've brought 250 people here. We're at about 54 different hotels spread all over this island. We've literally shipped all of our extras in. It's been kind of a staggering logistical feat to pull off, and uh, the one factor in all of it is what's shining down on me right now is the sunshine, and that, that's a miracle. It's, it's, it's quite good at the moment, I have to say. It's quite a nice life. We wanted everything to be on a very large scale because the stakes between these two wealthy men are very high, and they're trying to up one each other to win the heart of this woman. <laughs> <laughs> good. 
We build the stands for the ladies and for the bride in a traditional Renaissance style. So we used a lot of period elements to make it look more like a, almost like a recreation of, of the times and, and uh, as if Colin was a, a knight in a way. Your hands in there. Yeah. Push your shoulder. And off you go. The world champion, actually, of the Highland Games here, teaching me and Patrick how to do it properly. And he's pretty amazing. I mean, he's like a big superstar in the Highland Games world. And he tossed a real cable, because ours are fiberglass. Maybe I shouldn't say that. But um, ours aren't real folks. Ah, oh, I could do this! So we've had the proper tuition to make it look as real as we can. But, you know, it's a comedy, so you know, things go wrong, and, uh, you know, there's some pretty funny things connected to it. Oh, what an ass! In the end, you know, it's a, it's a different take on romantic comedies, and what is nice about this is it is seen from a male perspective. Most of the time in movies, it's always the girl that's getting their heart broken. So it really is nice to see that happening to the opposite sex. This is character comedy. It's the misguidedness of the characters and the fact that you recognize human truth. And that's what you laugh at. How can that be generic? It sounds like something somebody's supposed to say as opposed to what you're really feeling. Every bride endures um, all these sort of hardships as they're getting married and uh, that can either be a good experience for the maid of honor or it could be an absolute miserable one. A good maid of honor is just there through it all, through thick and thin, and be prepared with lots of hugs and kisses and a lot of honesty as well. It's like a co-op for parakeets. What? It's actually, I'm coming out with a new magazine, Man of Honor. It's, uh, it's, it's debuting in June 2008. I'm doing that with Oprah. It's our first collaboration together. <laughs> Thank you, people. I'm going to be back in my trailer now getting cold. <laughs>